Our first reading this morning comes from the book Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, look he comes, leaping up on the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Hear the word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 45, and it's to be found on page 268 of the prayer books. We're going to be reading verses 1 to 2 and 6 to 9. I'll read the first verse if you can respond with the second verse and we'll do alternate verses. My heart is astir with fine phrases. I make my song for a king. My tongue is the pen of the ready writer. You are a Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. Righteousness and hated evil. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes and cassia. Music from ivory palaces makes you glad. The second reading comes from the letter of James, chapter 1, verse 17, starting at verse 17. Every generous, generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In the fulfilment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness and the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who... Um, those who look at themselves in a mirror for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like but those who look into the perfect law the law of liberty and persevere being not hearers who forget but doers who act they will be blessed in their doing if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled by God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark chapter 7, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now, when the Pharisees and some Sadducees uh, of, and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. They do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. It is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God to hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride and folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Right, I have a true story this morning. I just got back from a clergy conference with a whole bunch of other clergy, which is always an interesting thing, uh, locked in a room together. Um, and I was reminded of this true story. It's wonderful, actually. Uh, if you've heard this before, pretend like you haven't. Until uh, don't, don't shout out what the, the end of it is. So, there is two Christian missionaries. They've gone over to Africa, right? And they're walking between the different tribes, having a great time, very happy. Things seem to be going swimmingly until they see a lion creeping closer to them. And the lion looks angry and hungry. Right? All of a sudden, the lion bolts and starts chasing them. The missionaries run away. They're really quick, these missionaries. They run away from the lion. The lion keeps chasing them, closing in, closing in, closing in. And they turn to each other while they're still running and have a great conversation. They say, what should we do? What are we going to do? It's certainly certain death. And they said, okay, I know what we'll do. And they both knelt down and prayed that God would make the lion a good Christian. Right? And it was a miracle. The lion got within like a meter of them and stopped, knelt down, held his hands like this, and started to pray. And he said, Lord, for this food I'm about to receive, make me truly grateful. <laughs> True story. Huh? Traditions. Huh? Interesting things. What's the heart of our traditions? So this is, uh, this is a really clear and direct teaching from Jesus, right? This is one of the rare times in Scripture, well, fairly rare times in Scripture where we've got grumpy Jesus, right? Because we have the Pharisees and the scribes, and they're around when Jesus and his disciples are eating. 
Uh, by this time, they probably already complained about him walking through the grain fields and picking the heads of grain on the Sabbath, which he should not have been doing. Again, naughty, naughty Jesus and his disciples. And they see them this time eating without washing their hands properly uh, and not cleaning the pots that they're eating correctly either, which is a big no-no. Right? You don't do that if you're um, good Jewish people back in the first century. There are traditions that we follow, uh, and Jesus was not following them again. And he was teaching his disciples not to follow them again. Right? And there's uh, traditions about how to purchase meat at market pl- marketplace and all those kind of things. And there's great teaching comes from Jesus. Right? It's not the things that go into a person that defile. It's the things that come out of a person. You know, deceitfulness, licentiousness, greed, all of these kind of things. And we heard from the letter of James uh, today. <clears throat> Anonymous author, we don't know who wrote that. Uh, but this is, again, a very early Christian giving instructions on how to form an early Christian community. You know, people of the way. Uh, and part of that was, uh, be slow to speak quick to listen listen and slow to anger. That whole idea of what comes out is really important. And listening and journeying. So Jesus talks about what goes in, doesn't harm, cannot defile, it's what comes out. And that's where we get this idea that he you know, made all food from then on clean. Huh? Interesting about that. How many of us abstain from eating meat on Good Friday? Probably a lot of us, I'd say. You know, eat fish or something on Good Friday, right? We tend to love our traditions, don't we? And that's, that's a normal thing as part uh, of the human condition. You know, on Good Friday, we'll go and get a you know, fillet of fish burger from McDonald's instead or something. You know? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but again, it's all about the tradition. But it's a step further than this, something that we can very very easily overlook where I actually think the power of this message may be. Of course, the simple teaching that Jesus gave uh, is wonderful because we often don't get something so clear. But what is Jesus doing when he's talking about the tradition of people instead of the laws of God? Well, on a very surface level, we can say, well, you know, these are rules that people made up uh, and they don't have the same importance as those uh, wider and more powerful sovereign laws that God put down. And of course, there is truth to this. There's just one problem with that. These food laws that Jesus is breaking and the uh, pot and pan laws and things are written into Leviticus and Deuteronomy as laws from God. So what's Jesus doing? He's reinterpreting scripture and recognizing, even though it's written in their holy scripture as from God, that actually this is from people. He says that very clearly. This is a tradition of people. Yet the scripture says it's from God. He can delineate, I mean, he is God, right? <laughs> so that's, that's important. Um, delineate between what somebody has interpreted as a, as a teaching from God and said it is, but is actually a teaching of humanity from that which is from God. That's difficult to do. And it's been really the core of just about all of our theology through the last 2,000 years. All of our discussions in the church. All of our wonderings and laments uh, and ponderings have been about, is this from God or is this a human law? And people approach this in many, many different ways. But Jesus, time and time again, is consistent and clear with not just saying, but by his actions living, The thing that you're physically told to do is not as important as to why you were told to do it or why it was a tradition in the first place. 
I've told you about the, the pigs being raised in Israel, haven't I? You've forgotten? Good. I'm glad. So, I mean, this, this works here as well. So, it's not actually legal to raise pigs in certain areas of Israel, right? However, they have a really good ham industry. How does that work? Well, it works because they're following the law to the T, literally, as the words say. You're not meant to raise pork on the land of Israel. So a company came along and built a plinth four feet off the land, and they raised it on the, on the plinth. <laughs> There's a pork industry in Israel. <laughs> following laws literally and to the T quite often is psychotic. Right? Or it could be very useful because we can actually... Uh, contradict that law the heart of why it was written by following it perfectly right? these, are, these are complex things I guess for us to work out but that's part of faith that's part of discipleship but Jesus says if it's going to hurt someone so often and he doesn't say this specifically in his words but he does it by his actions right? his disciples were hungry when they were walking through that field they probably hadn't eaten for quite a while. So what was more important, that they didn't feel the pangs of hunger than following the law of the book to a T. Right? His disciples at that time were having a meal together. They were in fellowship with each other. They were probably exhausted. They'd been traveling through the countryside over and over again. And what was more important to Jesus was that they had this time together. They had this nourishment than they did the physical things that they were told to do in black and white by the book. It's like his teaching about divorce, right? We know that Jesus said, uh, um, he took the teaching on divorce further and said, <clears throat> that apart from on grounds of infidelity, there should be no divorce. And in the church, we argued over that so often. And it wasn't until, you know, fairly recently that we started remarrying divorced people in the church as part of our church history. But it's because we completely misunderstood the heart of that teaching. Previously, a man, because of the law of Moses, written in the scriptures, could give his wife a certificate of divorce and dismiss her for just about anything. Anything at all. And when they did that in that society, it left her destitute. She was at the mercy of her family, and if her family couldn't provide for her, she was on the streets. So the heart of that teaching from Jesus was that, no, you have fidelity and, and responsibility to that person you're in that relationship with now. You cannot just dismiss them with a, with a certificate. You have to act with love and commitment and realize that they have worth. But then 2,000 years later, when our society is very different... <clears throat> we have these discussions on the black and white, what's written there, these fights about, well, should we remarry, should we not? But that's not the point. It was never the point of that teaching. So, friends, it's important that we understand our traditions, right? We get used to different things, and I think here in Freshwater today uh, is a really good example, right? It's weird not to have the projector up there, isn't it? It's a bit strange to not have that anymore. That's now part of our tradition at this service, <clears throat> we go back to our books and some people will think, oh, it's wonderful. And we're reading from our books again. But again, whether we're reading it up there, whether we're reading it in a book, doesn't matter at all. That's not the heart of what we do or why we do it. What matters is that we worship here, that we support each other here, that we pray here, and we sing praises to God. In times of COVID as well, we've had to pivot so often Different traditions begin, different traditions end. It's okay to like traditions. It's good to like things that we've done previously before and get comfortable with that. But it's when we lose sight or don't even know why we do them anymore. And worse, when those traditions hurt people. That we need to take stock and remember the example that Jesus gave us time and time again. Why do we do what we do? Is it of God? Is it life-giving? And if it's not, we need to change it. So friends, I, I thank God as always for the scripture this morning. Uh,
the great teaching of it's not what goes in. You can eat whatever you like, right? It's fine. Don't worry about it. Eat whatever you feel like. It's not going to hurt you. You know what? You could probably even eat some meat on Good Friday. Just don't tell anyone. As long as you have a good, hefty dose of Anglican guilt, you'll be right. So so it's not what goes in that matters. It's what comes out. It doesn't mean being untruthful. It doesn't mean pretending we're okay when we're not. It doesn't mean pretending we love someone when we don't. But it means expressing these things in ways that are not going to hurt others. Expressing these things in ways that are compassionate uh, and acceptable. Not what goes in, what comes out. And we thank God for the grace he's poured upon us. Let's follow the example of the letter of James and share that grace around. Let's question our traditions and let's always be looking for new and fresh ways to lift others up. In the name of God, the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen.